Hey guys, the other day I was fixing my friend's fog machine and I figured I would uh, make a video on how it works. So, these are really common, especially this time of year being Halloween and all. Uh, they produce a nice smoke effect for graveyards or front doors, whatever you're using for haunted houses. Um, and they really are a very simple machine if you break it down. So I'm just going to go over the different parts and basically how it works. So you have a simple reservoir of whatever type. Some of them are bottom fed, some of them are top fed like this one. As you can see the tube just runs through there. Um, they obviously have some kind of tube to run it down. And then the first electronic device you have is the pump. So that essentially pumps the material, or material, the liquid, which is distilled water and glycerin, usually. That pumps it from the reservoir into this pipe, which goes into the heater. This pump runs on 120 volts, is around 22 watts, and is what they call a solenoid pump. This is actually what failed on my friend's fog machine. In fact, I'm going to see if I can find the old one. I actually ripped it apart. Let's see if I can fix it. Yeah, here it is. Hold on. Pieces. Alright, there we go. Oh, and I actually have another good example of a pump one. Okay, so this is basically what it is. As you can see, I carefully opened it. Um, so basically, what you have is a few coils running around here. Um, I mean, I could figure out exactly what the coils are by doing a calculation, but I'm not going to do that. So you basically have that. And then inside of there, you have these. And this goes together. Something along the lines of... I don't remember exactly how it goes together, but basically what happens is the springs act in a way with a check valve and blah, blah, blah. This thing oscillates back and, whoops, oscillates back and forth inside there and pumps the liquid with a series of check valves. A check valve basically lets the liquid move one way, it can also be used in air pressure, it lets, it use, lets it flow one way but not back. So that's used by this. This allows it to, this, this sticks in, uh, once it's all together, that sticks like that against, oops, sticks against it like that, and that allows the liquid to be pumped, so it pushes it out of the way and the liquid flows around it, but then if the material, the liquid wants to come back, it stops it. So that's a check valve. Um, basically what was wrong with this one is it just got gunked up and when I was taking it apart because the one part wasn't screwing off properly this little guy got bent so it didn't really work too well for that so I, oops, I just managed to pick up this on Amazon for a couple bucks well it was like 20 bucks but um, and then I had to switch out this brass fitting from the old one to this one so it would go together so that's basically your pump that's about all I can give on that. Um, here's another variant of that. This one's a bit bigger and not as efficient, but it's the same kind of concept. You got an oscillating rod, oops, oscillating um, connection point, I guess you'd call it. And in this case, it just moves a diaphragm, and then there's probably some kind of check valve in there. This just runs on a little motor, probably DC. Yeah, anyway. So that's that. That liquid then gets pumped up through here. This is a compression fitting along with another compression fitting up there. That, that gets pumped into this, which is basically a straight copper rod through an aluminum block. In that aluminum block, you can see the connections here, those two down below, is basically what you'd have in a oven or water heater. It's a long U-shaped heating element and that goes inside the aluminum block, and the aluminum block helps to retain that heat. Um, and then it's also wrapped in this, looks like some kind of, uh, it's not fiberglass, because fiberglass would melt, but some kind of high temperature insulation, and then that's held together with, uh, believe it or not, this is actually Teflon tape, like the stuff you'd use to seal pipes. Um, not quite sure why they use that there, but I guess it does have a high heat tolerance, so it makes sense. So that, this basically, the, the purpose of this is to heat up and stay hot for as long as possible. So that's why they have it insulated. 
So that liquid gets pumped through there, it, it then hits that hot pipe, and turns into vapor, which is expelled out the front. Now you're probably wondering, what the heck's this? Is this some kind of like, uh, you know, little light or something? And no, this is actually a thermal switch. And what this does is it says, hey, if this is under a certain temperature, it's going to keep the power on here. So when this is below, I'm not exactly sure the temperature, let's say, let's just make it simple. Let's have it 100 degrees Celsius. This will stay on. This will stay closed, which will provide power to the heater until it reaches 100, we'll say 110 degrees Celsius. So once it reaches 110, that shuts off, shuts off the heating element, and this also actually allows the user to push the button to operate the pump. So basically what this is doing, it's doing two things. One, it's making sure that this is hot enough to get the liquid going. And secondly, it's, it's saying you can't run the pump while this isn't hot because it dropped too much current and blew a breaker. So inside these, this is basically a little ceramic um, housing, and inside it is two pieces of metal, one that's fixed and one that's bent. The one that's bent is actually two layers of metal that are molded together. Uh, I'm not sure if they're soldered or not. Um, hold on, I got a weed whacker outside my window. Sorry about that. Okay, well anyway. Two pieces of metal that are sandwiched together. So let's say these two fingers are two different metal. Let's say one is steel and one is... I don't know. Um, okay. Just gonna wait for that weed whacker to go by. Okay. So as I was saying, when one of those metals gets hot, they both have different thermal expansion rates. So let's say the metal's bent like this. The one on top expands faster than the one on the bottom, or the one on the bottom barely expands at all, and this one expands a lot when it gets hot. So what that does is when it gets to a certain temperature, it unbends. Kind of like one of those uh, wrist, those slap wrist bracelets. It stays rigid, but when you when it breaks that uh, the rigid point, it just curls up. Same kind of thing, except this is influenced by temperature. So what you have in the switch is you have your fixed piece of metal, and you have this curved thing, so it's curved, and when it reaches a certain temperature, it pulls up and breaks the circuit. It's a very simple device. Um, those almost never go in these. It's usually always the pump, or the uh, tube gets clogged. And, uh, I mean, that, that's about it for that. Um, I mean, you got, like, your switch and fuses there. Not much to really say. Um, so, yeah. So, whole operation. Plug it in, turn it on. This thing's closed. Starts a heating element. Once that heating element reaches a certain temperature, usually around 2 to 5 minutes, this will turn off. It'll engage the pump. And the user has the ability to make fog with the remote, or some of the fog machines actually have the button on them. And uh, that's, that's about it. Um, if you guys have any questions about fog machines, or have one of your own that isn't working, um, you know, let me know. I will give you one tip for these, if you have one and you want to maintain it every year. I would, after you're done using it, like after your Halloween's done, or whatever the event you're doing, if it's a party, whatever, every time you use it, I would put, just get go to Publix, pick up one of those distilled waters, dump it in, run it through. Just run, uh, if, if you have a pipe like this, you can just put the pipe right in the distilled water and just run it through for a few cycles, just to clean out the stuff, because this uh, fog juice has glycerin in it, and that gunks up at, over time, so you don't want that to happen. That's what happened to this. My friend left it outside, or not outside, but um, he left it full of stuff all year in the attic, gumped up, and it didn't work. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment, and I will try to do more videos soon. Thanks for watching.